two, most of the key players were aware of jet technology and were all actively trying to develop their own versions of jet aircraft. The British had the Gloucester Meteor. The Germans had the ME262 and Arado 234. The United States had the Bell P-59. And the Soviet Union began their entry into the jet race in February of 1945 when the Council of People's Commissars ordered that Mikhail Yangurevich, or MiG, develop a single-seat jet fighter to be equipped with the captured BMW 003 jet engine from Germany. The plane was to be used to attack enemy bombers and was going to use a single large cannon and two smaller cannons as armament. Later, another set of requirements that were released in April of 1945 more specifically required that the plane have a top speed of 565 miles per hour at 16,500 feet and should be able to climb to that altitude in about 4 minutes or less, and it should have a range of 510 miles. The council decided that they wanted to test planes and ordered three prototypes that should be delivered for test flights by March 15, 1946. The design team began work immediately on the plane, which they called the I-300. It was to be based on a pod and boom design because of its simplicity to build, and this shape also had the ability to package the early large diameter jet engines within its fuel silage. This was important given their short time frame to deliver the prototypes. The design allows for great cockpit visibility also. Protecting the fuel silage from the exhaust heat of the jet engines was something that they had to take into consideration though due to the fact that the jet engines exited up under the rear of the fuel silage. The plane's design also had upswept wings and the intake located in the very nose of the plane. The power plants for the jet were to be two RD-20 turbojet engines. These were Russian copies of the captured German BMW engines. They were to be located behind the cockpit inside the plane with, it, with their exhaust exiting under the rear fuel slides, like I said. Steel laminate heat shields were installed on the bottom of the fuel slides to protect it from the ex hot exhaust. And the primary fuel tanks were bag types that were located in the fuel slides above the engine. The plane also had uh, three bagged fuel tanks in each wing. The plane had a total fuel capacity of about 429 US gallons, and the armament chosen for the plane was a single 57 millimeter cannon mounted in the center of the plane with this barrel sticking out of the middle of the intake. This cannon would have about 28 rounds of ammunition. The other two guns were located right below the intake on the front lip of the plane's nose. They were both 23 millimeter guns and had 80 rounds of ammunition each. This location of the guns would actually uh, would actually end up being a pretty, pretty big issue with the plane. Um, when they got up into the higher altitudes where the air is thinner and they fired the guns, the engines actually ingested so much of the gas from the, from the sh rounds being fired that uh, it would actually um, stall the engines out. Construction of the three prototypes began in late 1945 and the first jet ground testing began uh, that December. Ground tests showed that the engines, uh, the exhaust caused a strange low pressure area under the rear fuel silage and that caused the jet tail to tilt down during engine tests. The heat shielding also caused a lot of problems. The expansion rates of the steel laminate and the aluminum skin of the aircraft were a lot different and uh, that caused the skin of the aircraft to deform while heated. So they had to redesign and refit the plane um, before they were del delivered for uh, official testing. On March 23, 1946, the first prototype was driven on a truck to the Flight Research Institute airfield at Ramanskoye to begin flight testing. Oh, I just butchered that name. <laughs> the MiG I-300 wasn't the only jet aircraft being built by the Soviets at this time. Yakolev, or Yak, was also designing and building a plane for testing and its first prototype was also to be delivered in March for testing at the same time. On April 24, 1946, representatives from both aircraft design firms, MiG and Yakolev, flipped a coin to determine which aircraft would be the Soviets' first jet to fly. MiG won the coin toss and the I-300's maiden flight lasted about six minutes. Before flight testing was even complete, a small batch of 10 production aircraft were ordered designated the MiG-9, built using original German BMW 003 engines and were to be assembled at Factory No. 1 in Kazan. Like most first-generation jet planes, the MiG had its fair share of issues. The stability of the plane wasn't very good. It also suffered from serious vibration problems and uh, the entire airframe had to be stiffened. The refitting didn't fix the issue, however, and on July 11th, during a demonstration flight in front of a high-ranking uh, group of Soviet officials, the plane crashed, killing its pilot when the attachment lugs of the wing 
leading edge fairings failed and struck the horizontal stabilizers. The remaining two prototypes began flight testing the following month, but various reasons delayed the start of the state acceptance trials until December. The horizontal stabilizer on a second prototype disintegrated during a flight in the meantime, but the pilot was able to land the airplane. Another similar incident with the third prototype in February of 1947 forced MiG to reinforce the entire tail section of the airplane. The MiG-9 test trials were complete by June, and the plane generally met the requirements set by the Council of People's Commissars. The plane was generally simple to operate and relatively easy to fly. The issue that pilots found were that the engines flaming out during high-altitude cannon firing, there was no ejection seat, the plane had no air brakes or fire suppression system, which was a big issue due to the fact that the internal fuel bags were located directly over the engines and they were not self-sealing. The cockpit also was not pressurized or armored at all. Despite these complaints, the planes were ordered into production as the Soviet leadership anticipated these issues to be slowly rectified during its production time. A batch of 50 aircraft were ordered in late 1946 to participate in the 1947 May Day Parade. The planes were built in March and April 1947 with standard armament of one 37mm cannon with 40 rounds and two 23mm cannons. But after the 50 aircraft were built, the production line was shut down to incorporate some of the design changes such as a refitment and enlargement of the vertical tail to improve lateral stability. Air brakes were added on the wings and the fuel system was improved. The underside of the fuel slice was also smoothed to improve the flow of exhaust gases and eliminate air suction inside of the body of the jet. A total of 610 aircraft were eventually built. They entered service in 1948, and in December of 1950, 12 regiments of 31 aircraft each were transferred to China for air defense during the Korean War. These planes were used to defend Xinjiang, Tangshan, Guangzhou, Shanghai, and Peking. The Chinese considered sending their MiG-9s to Korea in 1951 under Soviet pressure, but finally decided against it because of the much superior MiG-15 had shown it was more than a match for U.S. planes over the peninsula. Today, there are three MiG-9s known to survive. There is one at the Central Air Force Museum in Manino, Russia, one at the Chinese Aviation Museum in Beijing, and finally there is another one at the Beijing Air and Space Museum. And that's the big nine, guys. That's the, the Soviet's first jet plane. Pretty cool.